Hey, how's it going? My name is Serena and welcome to my studio. Do alcohol inks fade? What does light fast mean? How do we measure it? What can we do to protect our paintings from fading? Today, I'm going to answer these questions and more in today's episode of Alcohol Inks A to Z. Before we get started, make sure to hit the red subscribe button to get more videos on alcohol inks, including techniques, hints, tips, and tricks. So do alcohol inks fade? And what is light fastness? To answer these questions, we need to understand light and its relationship to colorants. Light fastness is the degree of resistance a colorant, such as dye or pigment, has to fading when exposed to ultraviolet light. In other words, the more light fast a colorant is, the less it fades when exposed to light. The sun emits ultraviolet radiation, which is a form of electromagnetic radiation, along with radio waves, microwaves, x-rays, and gamma rays. I'm not going to go into a lot of detail on the physics, but basically all of these wavelengths fall along a spectrum. Here we see visible light, which is all the light humans can see with our naked eye. And here we see ultraviolet light. Ultraviolet light is particularly damaging to paintings over time because when colorants are exposed to it, the chemical bonds break or get disrupted, which causes fading. The longer paintings are exposed to ultraviolet light, the more time it has to disrupt those bonds and the greater the potential for fading. Light isn't the only thing that affects the changing of colorants. Factors such as temperature and humidity can also do this as well. The way to determine how light fast a colorant is, is by testing it. One of these tests is called the blue wool scale, which is used for measuring fading of coloring dyes. How it works is, two identical samples including the color we want to measure are created. One is kept away from light, while the other is placed in the equivalent of sunlight for three months, usually in a machine that replicates three months of sunlight. These machines have special lamps, such as xenon lamps, that closely simulate full-spectrum sunlight, including visible light and UV rays. They also control other variables, such as humidity, to try to be as consistent as possible throughout the testing. The reason this testing is usually done artificially instead of with natural sunlight is that sunlight will change depending on a few factors, including latitude, climate, and season. Along with both samples, testers include what's called a blue wool fading card or textile fading card. This card includes eight wool swatches that are dyed blue. Each swatch is dyed to a different level that's designed to fade after exposure to a known amount of light. The first swatch fades the fastest. The second swatch takes roughly twice as much exposure to fade to the same level as the first swatch. The third swatch takes roughly twice as long to fade to the same level as the second swatch, and so on. After testing is completed, the sample exposed to light is compared to the swatches on the blue wool card to see which swatch on the blue wool card closest matches the level of fading from the sample. The control colorant and blue wool card that were kept in the dark shouldn't show any signs of fading at all. If the sample is faded to the same level as sample 2, it's given a rating of 2 or poor. The blue wool scale gives a rating from 1 to 8 with one being the poorest light fastness associated with the most fading and eight being the most light fast with the least fading. Now there's another rating scale that you might have seen before, which is ASTM. This stands for American Society of Testing and Materials. ASTM is a not-for-profit organization that develops and publishes standards or documents for a wide range of materials including art mediums such as oil and watercolor. These standards include procedures for testing as well as other types of standards such as classification standards. On some watercolor tubes, like this one from Daniel Smith, you might see conforms to ASTM on the tube. 
ASTM has a ranking system that they use for testing light fastness of several different mediums, but unfortunately none to date for alcohol inks. The ASTM has ratings from 1 to 5, similar to how the blue wool scale has ratings from 1 to 8. On this same Daniel Smith tube of Blue Appetite Genuine, you can see an ASTM light fastness rating of 1. 1 means excellent, 2 is very good, 3 is fair, 4 is poor, and 5 is very poor. Here you can see both rating systems side by side. As you can see, ASTM rating 3, which is fair, would be the equivalent of Blue Wool rating 4 or 5. Generally, any colorant with a rating of ASTM 3 or higher, or Blue Wool rating 5 or lower, are considered non-permanent, and because of the potential for fading, shouldn't be used in artist quality paint or in paintings destined for museums. Anything with a rating of poor or very poor is considered fugitive. Now you might have heard the term fugitive before. In this case, no, it's not a criminal on the run. It's a colorant that's unstable and prone to changing when exposed to light, humidity, etc. It might lighten, darken, change, or disappear entirely over time when it's exposed to these factors. Fugitive colorants are not light fast. They're great for crafts and journals, but not for fine art or art that you're hoping will still look vibrant and bright in a hundred years. So are alcohol inks light fast? Unfortunately, not really at this point in time. However, as this medium continues to grow and more testing is done, companies are working hard to develop more and more light fast alcohol inks. So what can we do about fading? We have a few options. Keep paintings out of direct sunlight to minimize UV exposure. Seal pieces with a high quality UV spray, which helps minimize fading. Mount the pieces using resin that has built-in UV protection or behind UV glass, or scan them and make prints. This allows you to reprint them as many times as you like, and each time your painting gets reborn with beautiful, vibrant colors. So there you go. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new. Please give it a thumbs up. Feel free to ask any alcohol ink related questions in the comments, and don't forget to hit the subscribe button to be the first to learn when I release new videos all about alcohol ink techniques and tricks. Other videos include brands of alcohol inks, surfaces you can use alcohol inks on, blending solutions, and much, much more. So hit subscribe and I'll see you soon. Cheers!